the year 1874, at only 29 years of age, German mathematician Georg Cantor published a paper that would change our understanding of infinity forever. For the first time in human history, he could rigorously show that there is more than one type of infinity, that there is something even bigger than infinity. Until Cantor worked on this topic, the concept of infinity has been more of a philosophical rather than a mathematical one. So, how can you actually do it? How can you find something bigger than infinity? Well, to answer that question, we will begin quite simple, with numbers. There are infinitely many numbers. You could start counting now and you would never come to an end. Those numbers which we use for counting are called natural numbers, but at some point we needed more numbers to keep tracks of that mainly. The integer numbers were born. They not only contain the natural numbers as a subset, but also the negative natural numbers. But of course it goes further. We can split the integer numbers up into fractions and we will get the so-called rational numbers. So far, so good. But now it's starting to get crazy. There are numbers which cannot be expressed as a fraction of integers. Those numbers are called irrational numbers. And the most prominent example probably is the square root of 2. But it even goes beyond the irrational numbers. The square root of 2, for instance, can be written as the solution of the equation x squared minus 2 equals 0. This type of equation is called an algebraic equation, and its solutions are algebraic numbers. The general form of an algebraic equation is this, with the coefficients being rational numbers. Many irrational numbers can be solutions of algebraic equations, but there are numbers which just cannot satisfy any algebraic equation whatsoever, and those numbers are called transcendental. The most famous transcendental numbers are pi and the Euler constant e. Combining the rational with the irrational and the transcendental numbers, we get the set of real numbers. We can go even beyond that and talk about the complex numbers, but for the sake of this video we will leave this one out. There is enough of the real numbers already. And as it will turn out, more than enough. We already know that there are infinitely many numbers, but it seems like there have to be different sizes of infinity. The question is, how do we actually compare the size of two infinitely big sets? Well, it's easier than you think. Before we attack the problem of infinite sets, we will have a look at finite sets. How do you compare the size of two finite sets? That's easy. You just count the numbers in the left set and you count the numbers in the right set. If both sets have the same amount of numbers, they are the same size. But let's think about how you would do it without actually counting the numbers. Without counting, you could pair the numbers up. Each number from the left set gets a partner from the right set. If all numbers in both sets have exactly one partner and no number is without one, then both sets are of the same size. Mathematicians call this a bijection. And we can easily use this for infinite sets. Two infinite sets are said to be of the same size if there exists a bijection between the two sets. This already has some incredible consequences. Take the set of the natural numbers for instance. Now take the set of the even numbers on the right. Both sets are infinitely big. Intuitively one would assume that there are more natural numbers than even numbers, right? But here comes the twist. If we map every natural number onto its double, we will create a bijection between the two sets. Each number on the left has exactly one partner on the right and vice versa. This can only mean that both sets are of the same size. Similarly, we can prove that the set of integers is the same size as the set of natural numbers. And more amazing even, the set of rational numbers as well is the same size as the set of natural numbers. But what about the real numbers? Here is where things are getting really crazy. Georg Cantor could show that there have to be more real numbers than natural numbers. He even went a step further. He showed that there are more real numbers between 0 and 1 than in the whole set of natural numbers. How is that even possible? Let's have a look at Cantor's incredible proof, which nowadays is known as the diagonal argument. Take an infinite sequence of real numbers between 0 and 1. Each number has infinitely many decimals without any recognizable pattern. Since each of those numbers has a natural index, every natural number gets paired with exactly one element of the sequence. So there is a bijection between the natural numbers and this sequence. We now show that there exists an element outside of that sequence. To find a real number outside of the sequence, we use Cantor's diagonal argument. Let's call this new number set. For the first decimal, we will take a look at the first element of our sequence. 
If the decimal of x1 is 5, then our decimal set1 will turn to 4. If it's not 5, then set1 will be 5. It doesn't necessarily have to be the number 5, you can choose any number between 0 and 9. Now let's construct set2 in a similar way. We will take the second decimal of x2 and apply the same rule as before. If it's 5, then set2 is 4, otherwise set2 is 5. While we successively construct the decimals of set by diagonally going down the decimals of our sequence, we construct a completely new number that is not part of the sequence already. Although we already paired up every natural number with a real number between 0 and 1, we still could find another real number between 0 and 1 that doesn't have a natural number as a partner. Although there are already infinitely many natural numbers, we are able to find even more real numbers in the interval between 0 and 1, and therefore we can write the following equation. There are more transcendental and irrational numbers to be found between 0 and 1 than in the whole set of rational numbers. Infinity is weird, and the more you think about it, the weirder it gets. Nevertheless, it's an amazing field and it will always remain fascinating for generations to come. If you like this video, please leave a like. Maybe even consider hitting the subscribe button and don't hesitate to let me know your opinions in the comment section. Until the next video, bye my fellow path integrators.